and welcome to Across Africa, our weekly look at stories from across the continent. Coming up in today's show. Prolonging the ceasefire, Mozambique's rebel leader Afonso Dlakama has extended a truce for another two months. Violence had flared up in 2016, more than two decades after the end of the civil war. In Tunisia, it's a landmark discrimination case. Three black students from the Democratic Republic of Congo were victims of an attack. We'll bring you their story. And the bittersweet taste of Madagascar's chocolate industry revealed. We look at how locals are struggling to reap the benefits of their renowned cocoa crop. First, extending a truce in Mozambique, rebel group Renamo, which is also an elected opposition party, announced that it was prolonging a truce for another two months. From his hideout in the country's Gorongosa Mountains, rebel leader Alfonso Dlakama promised that his forces will not attack government troops or positions. Mozambique's 15-year civil war ended officially in 1992, but violence flared up last year and thousands of people have been forced to flee. In central Mozambique, a silent war is claiming lives. More than 3,000 people have fled renewed fighting between the army and Renamo, the former rebel group turned main opposition party. This young man arrived at one of the camps for displaced people after his uncle was killed. There is war there. We can no longer live in our homes. Every day after five o'clock, we had to go sleep in the bush. It was no longer possible to stay, so we fled. Most say they are fleeing violence committed by Renamo. The party opposed the Liberation Front during a long and bloody civil war that ended in 1992. But three years ago, the opposition took up arms again. They accused the ruling party for Lima of breaking the peace deal and grabbing too much power. Since May, June, there has been a sharp increase in the number of people fleeing from attacks by Renamo gunmen. We had to open five shelter camps. Entire villages have been emptied. Outside the camps, more than 10,000 people are sheltering with relatives. But some displaced people contest the government's official version, accusing the army of violence too. Sometimes the army beats the population, because when they arrive and they don't find anyone from Renamo, then they beat the people and say, you're Renamo, because when we get here, there's nobody else. Renamo says that people living in camps are too scared to denounce crimes committed by the army. And it accuses the government of trying to kill its leader, Afonso da Clama, who lives hidden in the mountains, surrounded by armed forces. The political situation gets worse and worse. Our party representatives are being persecuted. They die every day. They have no shame. They do it in broad daylight. People get kidnapped anywhere. Mozambique's displaced families just have to hope and pray for a better new year. Next, a savage attack in Tunisia has highlighted what sub-Saharan Africans are calling overt racism there. Three Congolese students were assaulted with a knife in downtown Tunis in late December. Civil society organisations say black Africans suffer from near constant taunting and accuse authorities of dragging their feet in addressing the issue. Sandro Lutyens and Hamdi Tilly met with the attack victims. Two students from DRC went to the courthouse a few days after the attack, where they met the judge and told their story one more time. They say they were assaulted and stabbed in central Tunis. He came from behind and stabbed me once, and when I turned around, he stabbed me again. I'm restless. I'm scared now every time a Tunisian insults me, saying we're monkeys. That's how they insult us. They tell us to go home. They don't want us here. It is only the latest in a long line of racist attacks and insults. The government now calls for a national strategy to change mindsets and for a law to fight discrimination. It's a specific part of the population which are racist and behave this way. A state of human rights is not a state where there is never an act of racism, but where acts of racism are punished by law and where legislation is made to initiate a change in behaviour. But the new reform is not enough for these sub-Saharan African students. They say racism is not their only problem. 
expensive residence permits and slow administrative procedures make things worse. Racism exists everywhere. Our focus is on the administrative problems and the lack of security to protect us from the dangers we encounter. The police won't listen to us. That's also a form of discrimination. The student organization polled 400 of their members. All said they wished to leave the country. Seven years ago, 13,000 sub-Saharans studied in Tunisian universities. That number has dropped by half. Now, how about this for a pioneering way to improve public health? One doctor from Cameroon is causing somewhat of a buzz online with her internet health tutorials in a country where there are an average of only two doctors for every 10,000 people. Lauren Bersticher reports. Today we want to talk about stroke. With an online health tutorial in Pidgin English. For the past year, Susan and Jima Awe has been posting these short videos on YouTube. In Cameroon, she's better known by her online pseudonym, Dr. C. I remember the very first day we started, I actually left from night duty. I was tired, but I had to do that video. I was so excited about it. In her short segments, the cardiology specialist offers information and advice on disease treatment and prevention. Access to care remains a challenge in Cameroon, where there are only two doctors for every 10,000 residents. Lack of infrastructure also means people often have to walk hours, sometimes days, to receive treatment. Dr. C hopes her videos can help fill the gap in medical services. My favorite video is, is that on antibiotic resistance. Why? It's because antibiotic resistance is something that many people don't know about. It's something that is, is a silent killer that keeps rising and none of us know about it. Many Cameroonian doctors recognize the challenges of getting access to health care Yet some worry these online tutorials could deter people from seeking proper treatment. Going online to seek for medical uh, attention, it's quote-unquote good, but it's, it can be very harmful too. Dr. C practices in Germany but often visits Cameroon where she gives free seminars and training sessions. She says her online tutorials target all of West Africa, where Pidgin English is commonly spoken, the doctor also wants to start filming more Meducation videos in Hausa and Swahili. Now, chocolate from Madagascar is renowned as some of the finest in the world and sold for up to 50 euros a kilo. But even though 7,000 tonnes of cocoa are produced on the island every year, local people are finding it hard to reap the benefits. Take a look. Some of the world's finest chocolate will be made from these cocoa pods. In Ambanja, in the north of Madagascar, cocoa trees like the Criollo are protected from diseases and mold thanks to the geography and climate of the island. Cyril is very proud of his organic certified hectare. He also grows coffee and vanilla, but cocoa is his prize crop. Cocoa is very profitable, more so than vanilla, because cocoa grows all year round. Life in Ambanja would be very difficult if it wasn't for cocoa. After the harvest, the seeds are collected and sold to big companies via local cooperatives, which turn them into beans through a process of fermentation and drying. The luxury chocolate made in Europe from this cocoa will sell for close to 50 euros a kilo. But Cyril gets just 70 cents per kilo of seeds. We're still exploited by the whites, and we're aware of our fate. The price that collectors pay now, it's not the true price. It's not the right price. The price should be tripled, then it would be the right price. Most of the region's inhabitants work in the fine cocoa business. But they don't have the means to start making chocolate themselves. Even large producers, such as Meva, export the bulk of their harvest to foreign companies. Most of the chocolate is made out of cocoa that's not fine cocoa. And the companies selling it are big companies such as Lint, Kraft, Sucha, Mars. They do chocolate bars, sweets, and they try to bring down the cocoa prices, which are set by the stock exchange. A small proportion of Mavis production is transformed into chocolate locally, which is sold in the capital and abroad. But with 90% of the country's population living beneath the poverty line, 
few Madagascans can get a taste of the final product. Now, for those of you who maybe thought analog technology was dead in this digital age, well, uh, one music lover in Kenya might just change your mind. Legendary DJ Jimmy Rigami has been passionate about vinyl records since the 1980s, and now his unique collection has African music fans flocking to his record store. It's a gesture James Rugani knows by heart. In the 80s, the former DJ used to light up Nairobi dance floors with his eclectic music collection, mixing benga, Swahili pop, Afro-Cuban classics, and a slight touch of disco. Today, DJ Jimmy is retired from the nightlife, but his obsession with music continues. And I always hated anything that is not original. As you know, vinyl is the most original way of playing music. So I kept on buying and buying everywhere. Every time I found records, I, I couldn't resist the, the urge of buying. Rugami has been traveling across Africa to buy and trade vinyls since the late 80s. He's now acquired a collection that would be the envy of any music enthusiast. The 60-year-old even manages to make a living from his passion. He now sells records out of a small stall hidden in a Nairobi meat market. As you can see today, all music shops are kind of closed. It's because of uh, technology which we can't fight. Because uh, you guys only download music from the internet and uh, you don't buy anymore. James Rugani's business may yet have a future. The former DJ says he's noticed a rekindling of love for old music among Nigerian youths. And in 2015, global vinyl sales reached their highest level in 20 years. Well, I'm afraid that's already it for Across Africa this week. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.